everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan, and this is my husband, Jim. And we have a subject to talk to you about today that we believe will bring much encouragement to your life. In fact, we believe it can bring change in your life for good. For good. And uh, so, you know, it might be a good day for you to just take a few notes and write down some scriptures that you can tuck away and hide in your heart and, and walk out all the rest of the days of your life. But anyway, we're going to be talking to you about how a day of favor can change your life. Yes, favor is just good. That is so good. good. You know, the greatest day of favor that any of us could ever experience would be that day that we accept Jesus. Right. You know, that, that day when, you know, the Bible says that you have to hear somebody tell you about this. Mm -hmm. And then you have to believe it in your heart and then you've got to say say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. But anyhow, I believe that's the greatest day of favor for anyone ever. Because when Jesus comes into your life, the the possibilities of your life just just multiplied by the thousands and tens of thousands. Well the the moment Jesus came into your life, the favor of God just came out right. on you. Yeah. And you know in a few minutes, we're going to go through some Old Testament characters and show you how, you know, God in their lives made such favor and such a difference. First of all, let's talk about what exactly is favor. Favor. Favor is God's I am for you attitude. I am for you attitude. Right. It's personal. It's personal. God's for me. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, here it's defined as a friendly disposition to receive preferential treatment, excessive kindness, or unfair partiality. Also, is to act as if you like someone better than others. Yeah. And so when, when we, this is part two of a two-part series right. on favor. favor yeah. In our first part, we called it unfair, yeah. unfair. favor. Because favor, it's not fair. God's favor is not fair. Anybody's favor is not fair. That's right. It's just not. You don't, you don't even have to say it's not fair because it's already not fair. When you get it, you think, well, this wasn't fair. <laughs> What's fair about that? <laughs> Nothing. You just got favored. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, you know, you could think about a lot of different times in your life where you experience this favor. We've talked about the greatest time being born again would right. be. But, you know, there's a lot of different instances that, that I can look back and I can see how you know, I can remember the the birth of our first child. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, you should have seen her. She's like a porcelain doll. She was so fair. And we named her Jennifer, which means fair lady. I didn't know it when I named her Jennifer because that was before we got so in tune that we wanted to know what things meant. But anyway, there she was. She had these big blue eyes, and she had this gorgeous red hair. Of course, it wasn't long then. It was little bitty red hair. But, you know, I felt like, wow, I've just gotten the best of my life right here. You know, but, but that was favor. How did that happen? I had nothing to do with that. I mean, I had a little bit, but I couldn't, I couldn't have ever orchestrated her, her beauty. There was nothing I could have done. And it was like, wow, this is so Amazing, and you know, and then you know, you have the birth of the little baby boy, and was he so perfect? Mm -hmm. And then, and then we had another baby girl, and she came, and she also was was arrayed with this beautiful auburn reddish hair, it was gorgeous, you know. And you think, wow, I just felt so favored by God. I just felt like, wow, you know, I must be His favorite child. He's just done all these wonderful things for me. But you can look through your life, and you can see all kinds of places where. You know, if you could have planned it that way, you would have. But actually, you couldn't do anything. It was God that did it for you. What about, what about that day in August of 1968? I like that day. That was a big day of favor. It changed us both forever. Right. Well, you go with that. Okay, that was the day. And see, so you have to understand, Jim and I grew up on the very same street. But you know, one house between our houses. Yeah, and we we weren't like good friends. You know, I knew who he was. He knew who I was, but we didn't spend any time together. In fact, I think he had a crush on the girl across the street. 
So anyway, <clears throat> 1968, we, I just graduated from college, bought a new car, came home to that street where we grew up. He just happened to be home at the very same time that summer. And he just happened to notice that I was home. And we just happened to have a date. And we just happened to fall in love. How does that happen? I mean, but, see, those are things. You cannot plan things like that yourself. But I just know this. That's favor. I know that God favored me. Oh, I know he favored me. I was so excited when I met you. We had so much fun, and we still have so much fun together. And, you know, it's just, it's just it was a day of favor that changed us forever. It changed us forever. That is it just correct. did. That's correct. But anyway, you can, you can think of things like that yourself. Where you would have liked to think, man, I planned it. No, nah. it was just favor. And was it fair? No, it's not fair. But praise the Lord, God wants to bless us all with his favor. So that, that's where you're going to say that scripture I said earlier about how it's like a shield. Yeah, Psalm 512. With favor, <clears throat> you have compassed me about as with a shield. In other words, all around me is favor. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, look at me. Well, what do you see? Well, you see favor. Favor. <laughs> Why? Well, because it's all around me. That's right. The favor of God. God that is loves good. He yeah. favors me. That's God's I'm for you attitude. That's God's I am for you attitude. I'm, I'm for, for you. you I'm for you. Take it personal. Take it That's personal. That's right. That's, That's so right. good. All right. Okay, now I have a scripture too, okay? okay? This is Psalm 63, verse 3, and it says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, Think about that. His loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. But when you look this up, this word loving kindness also means favor. favor. His favor is better than life. Right. Well, you stop and think about this. Just the fact that, that you and I are, are sitting here right now and we're on television. Okay. That's the favor of God. Yeah, that's impossible. It's impossible. You know, that, know. that can't even happen. Uh, our friend Rick Renner was here. In the early, maybe 1990, 1991, right in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and I were in the sanctuary of the church praying. And he stopped and he looked at me and he said, he said, Jim, you need to be on television. And my <laughs> first thought was, what? 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 What, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. And I thought, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't think about that, you know, much more. But then... And I don't even know how long it was, if it was a year, two years, five years. I really don't remember. We got a, a gift at the church. Someone gave the church $25,000, and it was earmarked specifically television. for a television ministry, which at the time we did not have. Right. It was the farthest thing from <clears throat> my mind. And then, I mean, things just began to happen, this one thing after another. And here we are all these many years later. Here we are on television. Yeah, and you know, e even on a, a much more personal level, um, Jim and I, neither one have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I remember someone had watched our program. It was, it was a friend of mine. And she says, I didn't know you could talk like that. And I said, well, I can't talk like that. That's the favor of God. Favor of God. That's right. Because, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. just funny. Praise the Lord. Okay, now, Jesus also had some things to say about favor. All right. Okay, this is a really, this is a classic scripture. He quoted it. In fact, he opened the scroll that day in the temple, and he read this. We would call it Isaiah 61. But in your New Testament version, it's Luke 4, 18 and 19. Right. And this is the New Living Translation that I'm going to read. And here's what he said. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Boy, that's good, isn't it? It is. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. This is favor, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That the blind will see. That the oppressed will be set free. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. That's what Jesus said. You know, there he is surrounded in the synagogue or the temple, wherever he was that day, by all the scribes and the Pharisees and all these people. And he opens the scroll and he very purposely reads this to them. And it ends with, 
the time of the Lord's favor has come. Yeah. He's talking about himself. Right. He is the Lord's favor. See, I, just, I just believe that for you and I, mm -hmm. and uh, for our church, and, and, and for you also, that this is going to be a year of unfair favor. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we turn, we're going to find unfair favor from God. That's right. You know, it's, it's, it's like this. When you start looking for something, you will see it. Yes. You know, and, and since, you know, you're watching today and, and, and you're, we're bringing this to your attention, we, I just believe the Holy Spirit is just going to impart to you such, a, such a, an agreement with this message that you're going to, everywhere you go, you're going to start noticing this favor that just follows you along. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's, it's, uh, I don't know how to put it, it just to know that, that God's favor is in my life, it kind of makes impossible situations possible. Exactly. That's what it does. And you, you think, well, this is impossible. And then you think, no, no, I have God's favor in my life, and that makes it possible. That's right. It does. That's right. It makes it possible. Okay, now I wanted to show you this. Since we just read this in Luke chapter 4, where Jesus said, the time of the Lord's favor has come. Okay, then he goes on, and, and it's funny when you read this passage, you'll notice that at the first of it, man, everybody is on his side. They think he's most wonderful and they can't get enough of what he has to say. And at the end of the chapter, they all turn the other way. They're all mad at him. But anyhow, that particular day, he brought up these things about some people that had experienced favor. And so these are, um, I'm just going to read it to you and then we'll talk about okay. it. Okay, it's Luke chapter 4 and it's verses 25 and 26. Certainly there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land. Okay, you just need to imagine three and a half years of famine. Three and a half years have gone by and there's nothing but drought. I mean, there's a lot of hungry people. Yeah, very little food. Okay, and, it say, and he points out in Israel, those would be his people, yeah. right? Okay, and then it says, yet, verse 26, Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And many, okay, let's just stop right there and okay. talk about that for just a minute. Okay, a widow of Zarephath. Okay, and you love this story so much about how Elijah went to the king and he said, you know, it's not going to rain. Yes. And then God speaks to him and he says, here's what I want you to do. So, yeah. Yeah, he said, I want you to go to the brook Cherith. He said, I've told the ravens to bring you food. Now, we all know that ravens don't bring you food. They take the food. That's what they do. <laughs> and so he says, that's what I've done. Well, now, well, do you think that that's favor? I think that's favor. That's favor. You can't, you can't make that happen. That's right. So Elijah's sitting there, and every day he's noticing that brook. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Just, it doesn't seem to be as wide as it was. Mm -hmm. And every day he's watching that brook dry up. Yeah. And so kind of towards the end there when it's pretty much dried up, he says, okay, Elijah, says there's a widow in the city of Zarephath, and I've told her to feed you. Mm-hmm. Now you can imagine Elijah's thoughts. Well, that's not right. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go so, to a widow in Israel. That's right. That, that's not right. I mean, this it's a widow. She's poor. Yeah, uh, she's not uh, even here. You know, it, we're having a drought. Lord, don't you understand? She probably doesn't have very much and whatever. But nevertheless, he went. He went. Okay, and so I'm gonna summarize the story. Okay. Okay. He's, he's there that day, and when he gets there, he's, you know, he's all excited because God sent him to this yeah, place right. to get help, and he finds out she hadn't got anything either. She's got this little bit of flour, she's got this little bit of oil, and she has a son, and she says, we're going to make some bread, eat it, and then we're going to die. Oh, man, that's terrible, isn't it? That is. And so Elijah said, no. He said, look, just bring me a small piece of that bread first. Now, she was obedient, and she did just what the man of God told her to do. Yeah. And in, it says this about her. It said, she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. That's right. I'm just going to tell you, you can't make that happen. No. 
And uh, that's that's God's <coughs> favor. That is absolutely God's favor. Mm -hmm. And you know, it it all it all boils down to being obedient to what God said. Yeah. See, if if Elijah had said, "No, that's not right. I'm not going to go with that woman. She's not going to yeah. feed me." This would never have happened. If the lady. That's right. If she had said, well, what do you mean bring you a cake first? Right, right. This is all I have. I'm keeping it. We're going to do, the, we're gonna do the, the best we can with this, and you just have to go somewhere else and get you something. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's, that's so world Th That's right. Thinking. But both that's of them were obedient to what God mm -hmm. said. And, and what happened was it brought the favor of God into the equation. Yeah. And that changed everything. It changed it all. That changed everything. Man, that's, that is that's wow. That's very good. That's right. Okay. Yes. Now, see, we, we were in the book of Luke where Jesus had just talked about how the time of the Lord's favor has come. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about these Old Testament people. And so then it goes on in verse 27 of Luke chapter 4. Many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha, but the only one healed was Naaman a Syrian. So let's talk about that a few minutes. Okay, well, so here's Naaman. He's a prominent man, prominent man. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's probably done everything that he knew to do to mm -hmm. get rid of this leprosy. Right. And so one of his servants said, well, there's a prophet in Israel, and he can tell you what to do to get yeah. rid of it. Yeah. It was just a little girl. Yeah. And so... He said, okay. So he went. Well, you know, he was expecting this, the prophet to come out and just... Oh, oh man, just, yeah. Let's lay you know, hands on him. That's right. Just, he, just, you know, I know that he's just going to come out and I'm going to, you know, so forth. Mm -hmm. Nope, the prophet nope. sends somebody else out. Mm -hmm. and, and they're, here's sent what his they servant said. out. Yeah, sent his servant out. And he said, if you go dip in the River Jordan seven times, you'll be healed. Naaman got mad. That's right. He got he mad. Did. He said, are there not rivers in wherever he came from so I can dip in? Yeah. And so he was leaving. And so the servant that was with him said, well, if he had told you to do something, you know, what hard, it, yeah, difficult. you would have done it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just go do this? Yeah. Yeah. And so he did. And he dipped once, twice, three times, six times. So he came up the sixth time. He was no different than he was the first time. Mm -hmm. But he dipped the seventh time. Oh, and when man. he came up, he was totally healed. Yeah, and let's talk about that. That leprosy. Yeah. It, it's possible that he had body parts that were totally maimed That's right. from that stuff. That's right. It's possible that his face was totally disfigured. Maybe his ears were gone. Maybe his nose. We don't, we know, don't know. But it said when he came up, his skin was like that of a baby. A baby. That's a right. baby. Yeah. Do y'all know what a baby's skin is like? Yeah, it's it's just, the smoothest uh, ever. It <laughs> it's it the is. most perfect ever. Okay, so so could he do that? No. No. There was, you know, he would like to say, "Hey, man, I, I figured out if I just go do this and this." No, this was the Lord's favor right. that came His way. Okay, and you can see a couple of things from this. Okay, Jesus had said prophets are not accepted in their hometown. So these two people were not in the hometown, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that. But that's not all. It's really, to me, even more amazing that these people were outside the covenant. They were not like God's chosen people. Right. And God gave them favor it's just amazing. the same. That's amazing, yeah. But as we get down to here in a few minutes, and maybe we should skip to that now, and then okay. we could come back to this, about how you increase favor in your life. Okay. You know, see, Jim, you said it a while ago about how, you know, when, when um, it was Elijah first, and he went, and he was, you know, with woman in Zarephath, that was the widow. There was two opportunities there for both of these people to just, this is crazy. You know, this is the most absurd thing. I'm going to eat my bread and die anyway. Right. You know, she could easily have done that. And she could have certainly said, hey, I'm not giving you any of it. Or he could have equally had said, you know what? This is about crazy. I think it's I'll just go back to yeah. that little. It's not right for me to take her last minute. Yeah, yeah, he could have said that. So anyhow. And that would have been the logical 
thing to do. It would have been. Okay, so we're going to talk about three ways you can increase favor in okay. your life that we can find in the Bible. And there's more than this, but there's three. The first one would be just behaving yourself. Walking in integrity and acting right. Yes. Okay, that's the first way. Okay, and this is from Psalm 84, verse 11. Why don't you read it? All right, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. For the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Okay. That's really blameless. Good there. Bestows favor and honor. Okay. He shows favor and honor to those whose walk is blameless. blameless. Now, it doesn't mean perfect. It does doesn't it? mean perfect. It just means, like we said at the beginning, the people that are doing their best to act right, show integrity, do the right thing, behave yourself, <clears throat> those people have put themselves in a position because God's eyes are looking to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is right towards right. him. Yes. And if, if you want to act right, if you want to do right, your heart is towards God and he sees that. And he's ready to, you know, sunshine in your path. That's exactly right. I agree with you 100%. Okay, now here's, here's an example. <clears throat> Let's talk about Daniel, Daniel just a minute, okay? Okay. Daniel was a man that was, he was, he was a, had been, he was a Hebrew slave captive. Yes. In a foreign land. And so, anyhow, the Bible talks about how they, they wanted to get rid of him because they didn't want him in a position of authority right. in their country. And so all these guys got together that were in the king's court and they came up with this decree mm -hmm. that you can't do bow or pray to anybody outside of the king. The king. Okay, so, so what does Daniel do? Well, he has these seasons of prayer. He has appointed times every day that he, and everyone knew because his habit was so entrenched. Every single day, he went to a certain place, opened the windows, threw the curtains back, and prayed to God. And they knew all that, okay? Mm -hmm. So after the decree came, what did he do? He, he continued. Did, he, he continued. He, he didn't continued. Change. Because he was blameless. Because he was the kind of person that was going to do the right thing all the time. And so what happened is, you know, he was threatened with the den of lions and even ended up there. But what happened in that den of lions? The Bible says that the Lord shut their mouth. Right. Does that happen? No. Can you even can you even make that happen? That's the favor of God. That's the favor of God in his life. That's amazing. Yes. Okay, so... The first thing is just, just position yourself for some favor by committing yourself to the ways of God and walking that out in your That's life. Right. That's right. Not, you don't have to be perfect. No, you don't have to be perfect. Just do what you know is right. That's right. Good. Okay. Number two. All right. The second thing is put God and his word first place in your life. Interesting scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son or daughter, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then, then, then. you will find, you will win favor and a good night, good name in the sight of God and man. Okay, so this is all about putting the Word of God first mm -hmm. in your life. That's right. And, you know, it talks about how bind it around your neck, write it on the table of your heart. And it says, you know, when you do that, you're thinking about it all day long. Yes, you are. That's what you're doing. And so an example of this would be Joshua. Yes. Old Testament yes. Joshua. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he was in a place to become the most powerful person, person in the land following Moses. I can't even imagine no. what that would be like. God visited with him and he said, here's what you'll need to do. What did you tell him to do? Meditate in the Word day and night. Yeah. If you look it up, it's Joshua 1.8. And he said, if you'll do that, 
You'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success in everything. In every area of your life. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we're talking about the favor of God in your life, in my life. You should, you should as, a, as a child of God, you should expect, expect God's favor every day. Mm -hmm. There That's should not right. be a day go by where you and I are not looking for God's favor in our life in some way. Yep, that's right. And, you know, the Bible talks about how Jesus grew, grew in favor with God and, and stature yeah. with God and man. We can do that, too. And so we're just pointing out a few things here that could help us do that. And so you could just see it so plain how just putting God's word first and just simply acting in integrity and committing yourself to the ways of God will help you to grow in this favor. That's right. You know, just, just mentally make a little adjustment up here and say, from now on, I'm going to walk in the favor of God every day of my life. Right. And you can, every morning, you just, you just when you get up, before you, even before you get out of bed, and, just and, say, you know, the, wait a minute, I'm not through. Okay. Just say this. Just say, Father, I thank you that today I will see your favor in my life. That's so good. Yeah, I was just going to remind y'all about the I am for you. Yes. That's God's attitude. I am for you. And so, you know, like Jim is talking about here, just say that to yourself as you're getting out of bed. Right. God is for me. God's Who can be against today. me? God is for me. He is on my side. That's right. I mean, that's right. And, and the, th the thing is, that's just the truth. That's right. God is on your side. If God be for you, then who Can could be possibly against be against you? That's right. I want to remind everyone, Susan, that uh, any of our programs that we've done in the past, you can log on to our YouTube channels called The Bottom Line, and I believe that they're I all there. I think it's The Bottom Line TV. Maybe it's The Bottom Line TV. Anyway, they're TV. there. If you uh, have prayer requests, we would love to hear from you. Information is on the screen. You can contact us. We would love to pray for you. We mm -hmm. thank you for your continued financial support. And remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, disciples indeed, indeed, and you should know, know the truth, and the truth, truth will set, set you free. free.